Sarah Lou this morning, like a few weeks ago, we're going to um, play some songs, and please feel free to join in if you know them. But all you can say, chatting with your neighbour, if you haven't seen them for a while, that's also a nice thing to do. But we're going to sing a couple of worship songs to prepare ourselves for our next hour of worship together.
Good morning. Good morning. And a warm welcome to worship today. A special welcome to one of the visitors we have here for the first time. We hope you can say, stay with us at the refreshments after the service, which is held in the church hall for the two girls on my right and upstairs. A special thanks to the uh, garden group for the lovely arrangement at the front of the church. Very much appreciated. And please see Peter if you like this opportunity to be welcomed into membership in Petra Cross Sunday, 28th of May at 10.30. And so now I'm going to Mr. David Cross who will lead us in worship today. This is how much I'm going to be saying. <laughs> Not here. <laughs> if uh, you don't like what I say, you can ask Jamie to turn down the volume and then you won't hear. But I'm hoping you might like it. I was thinking this morning that um, as I stand here, There'll be a whole congregation of lovely people and some beautiful flowers behind me. And I was thinking, shall I say that they're equal in value, equal in beauty, congregation and flowers, but I think you've just edged it. Yes, the thing that um, I'd like to talk about this morning is um, God's love, God's promises, and our response. And I came across this reading, which I have, um, in my usual way, tinkered with a bit. Um, and it says, God loves us, just as we are right now. There is nothing we can do to make God love us more or love us less. He loves us. God loves us when we are responsive and even when we are not. We are loved so very much, not because of what we have done in our lives or because of who we are. We are loved very much despite what we have done in our lives and who we are. We are loved so very much. God's promises are sure and certain. His promises come from his love for us. And he asks us, will we love others as he loves us? I'd like to start now with our invocation, if you would pray with me. Our Father, we come to you as children, adoring children, who appreciate your care and love and what you do for us. And we want to respond in kind. We want to be responsive children who are happy and willing to do your will in our lives and help others understand your love for them. And in this spirit, we ask that you will be with us this morning, blessing us and our service. And we pray that as a result of this, we will be better fitted for your service. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Uh, Dave is now going to read for us a scripture from Hebrews. I might just say, as he's making his way up, that... Uh, I love this scripture. It's talking about, Paul was talking about the witnesses that the Jewish nation had and what it means to them. Morning. I'm reading from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 13, and then chapters 12, verses 1 to 3. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. 
This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous. <clears throat> when God spoke well of his offerings, and by faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as in his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children, because she considered him faithful, who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Amen. Thank you, David, for that reading. I'm sure we're going to hear more from that. Um, so let our hearts be open and our ears ready to hear God's word and application to our lives. Um, we're going to stand together if you're able. We're going to sing and we're going to praise God. He is an amazing God who surprises us. So let's stand together and sing.
Good morning. Thank you. Now, I wonder if you have ever made a promise. I expect you have. I think we probably all have made promises. Sometimes we make a promise and we use the word promise. We say, I promise that I will whatever it is. Sometimes I think even if we say, I will do that, that is still a promise, even though we don't use the word promise in it. When we keep a promise, or somebody else does, it's really great, isn't it? We can feel really good that we've been true to our word, or somebody has done what they've said they would do for us, and it's really brilliant. Sometimes, though, something happens, and that means that we can't do whatever we said we would. <coughs> Sometimes that's just circumstances, isn't it? Maybe we say we'll go and meet a friend, but then we become ill and we can't do it. And that can't be helped, can it? Other times, though, we can't make a decision. We choose to break a promise. And that is not so good, is it? So, this says promise on it, if you can't see from the back. So sometimes, I don't know, maybe we promise that we will do our homework, but we don't. Oh dear. We break our promise and it doesn't get done. Maybe we promise to clean out the hamster cage. <laughs> Or we promise to do the washing up, or mow the lawn, it's Tim, <laughs> whatever it is, and we, it doesn't happen, we don't do it, there's something, maybe we're just feeling lazy, or we don't want to do it, or whatever it is, oh dear, not so good. Now, I've got two, I have two more pieces of paper. I wonder if somebody else can think of a promise that didn't get kept, that got broken, who'd like to come up and tell us what that promise might have been. It could just be an example. It doesn't have to be something, you know, a promise that you really broke. And then come up and tear my piece of paper. Anybody want to come and have a go? Yes. Oh, there's somebody down there. Do you want to come up? No? Would somebody like I have. Um, I'm going to have a holiday this year. Okay. Back the seaside. Okay, that is brilliant. Right. If you you two want to come up and have a piece of paper, Rich, I do. Do you want to come up? Do you want to come up? Not cleaning your bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> So we, we have a volunteer to rip the paper. Is there another promise somebody can shout out that might get broken? Oh, here we go. I feel a confession coming on. <laughs> I promise to clean the car. When someone breaks their promise to us, we might think that we can't trust them quite so much, or they might think that about us too. So it's important to try and keep the promises we make, and to make good promises in the first place. 
just one of the amazing and wonderful things about God is that not only does he make some really fantastic promises in the, in the Bible, but he also keeps them. It's really incredible. So I was wondering if anybody can think of some promises that God has made in the Bible. And I'm going to come around with the microphone. Okay, you can just be very simple. It doesn't have to be God saying the word promise, but things that God has said in the Bible that he will do for us. Please help, oh. Please help me out with this, guys. <laughs> I'll be with you always. Excellent. Be with you always. So, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Absolutely. Isn't that fantastic? Right, any more? He will bless us. Yes. He will bless us. Any more? Love us. Perfect. Any more? Oh, <laughs> Prepare a place for us. Yes. Any more? Oh, come on. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I will give my angels charge over you. He cares about every part of our lives. I will give you peace. He will send his spirit to be with us. Never to fuck the world again. Never to fuck the world again. He will send his son to save the world. He forgives me. Anymore. We got I mean, we could be here kind of all day, couldn't we? But I've not got my heat set gear on, so <laughs> we'll call it a day there. <clears throat> so many amazing promises, and that's just a fraction of them, but they're all really good. I'm actually genuinely out of breath. <laughs> So if our promises that we make can be like those pieces of paper that we ripped up, you know, fairly easy to break, then I think God's promises are more like this book, okay, I mean, it's just a random book, um, but it's quite thick and heavy and quite hard to break. God does not break his promises. And I cannot, I'm not strong enough to break this book, but I'm going to try because mm -hmm. it will look funny. Okay, I'm going for the laughs. So. <laughs> I really can't do it. Get your dad to do this. <laughs> Never me, this is going to be so hard. I can't break that. I know this is not a perfect analogy. I know if we had like a super strong person, they they could break that. But the point is, God does not break His promises. It's not something that He does, and we know that we can always trust Him, which is a really fantastic thing, isn't it? So let's pray together. Father God, we are sorry for the times when we have broken our promises. Help us to forgive those who have broken their promises to us. Thank you that you are a good God who loves us and cares for us. Thank you for all the good promises you have given to us in the Bible. And thank you that we can always trust you to keep them. And Jesus, we thank you for all of our young people and our children and for all of the Sunday Club leaders. 
Please be with them as they go to their groups now and help them to learn more about you and how much you love them. Amen. Does anybody remember a comedian called Max, <coughs> Max Bygraves? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, not as long as you look. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, I remember he used to start by saying something like, I want to tell you a story. Something like that. Now, I want to tell you a story. There's a Native American parable which shares insights about who we choose to nurture. An old Cherokee was teaching his grandson about life. A fight is going on inside me, he said to the boy. It's a terrible fight, and it is between two wolves. One is evil. That wolf is anger, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, all of those types of things. And the other wolf is good. He is joy, peace, love, hope, uh, kindness, benevolence. That wolf is good. And the grandson thought about it for a minute, and then he asked his grandfather, which wolf will win? And the old Cherokee simply replied, the one you feed. A nice story, isn't it? The one you feed. And we know that the scriptures tell us that we have a, a good spirit within us. We also have a not so good spirit within us. And we need to feed the good parts of our lives. God's spirit, the things that we, take, we uh, have learnt over the years, uh, the things that we know as Christians we should do, we need to feed those things. I was going to say more on that, but I'll stop just now. Um, we're going to uh, have a hymn on the loudspeaker system, and it's one you all know. Um, if you want to join in quietly and sort of reverently, that's fine, but it's a hymn that you know. And after the hymn, uh, just remain seated, please. And after the hymn, Kay will give our intercessions and the Lord's Prayer. 